Welcome to the Millennial Guide to Mammoth Caves. First stop, a garage. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to the caves. Today we're joined by our friends Alex Domini, Olivia Lane, and Chase Guyton. Mammoth Cave National Park is the world's largest known cave system. It's about one and a half hours from either Louisville or Nashville. And here's Ranger Quinn. Who's ready to go down? Woo! That's what I like to hear. I'll tell you a little bit about the cave tour today and what you expect. All righty, so let's start off. Uh, as you go down the hill today, you'll walk down this cave trail about 100 yards down the hill to the cave today. And you'll walk down about 65 stairs into the entrance of the cave, starting to go through Houchins Narrows. Uh, Houchins Narrows is about six feet tall in total. I'm six foot two, and as I'm walking through there, my hatch is barely scraping the top of it. Uh, so if you're a little bit smaller than me, you'll be fine. Uh, if you're a little bit taller, good luck. Uh, past that point, you'll walk into the rotunda. Be the largest room uh, that you enter into today. Uh, and at that point, you'll see it forks out in two different directions. It'll be the left side and the right side. Uh, these are your two tour routes you'll be exploring today. Uh, on the left side will be three quarters of a mile till the end. The right side will be your shortest, just a quarter mile to the end. Uh, so you'll see about a mile of the cave today and walking about two miles in the cave today. There'll be rangers stationed throughout all of the cave and certain uh, points in the cave will have a lot of interest. Uh, so be more than happy to ask them questions. Uh, that's what we get paid for. Hey everyone, you can't see us, but we are in the cave. So we are inside a cave that is how many million years old? Millions. Millions, millions and millions of years old. And there's five different layers to the cave. They've found all kinds of artifacts. Um, there have been like a mushroom growing factory in here and, and like a, a tuberculosis and a tuberculosis hospital. hospital and like native uh people would come in and like use this to like store their food because they kept everything so well preserved it's an insane space and all the rangers are brilliant they know so much we've learned so much on the trip and on this front rock right here he put one of his feet on either side and he stood up there and preached wow wow and preached <laughs> and preached and preached and for hours he went. Sometimes four to five hours. This went on for about ten years that they had church service here. Wow. Um, what so how much of this um architecture that we're seeing is um like man made or like man guided and how much of it is the natural sort of like just the With natural the exception of the floor yeah. it's all natural. Oh wow. So these just, so the, all these rocks and the structure just happened. It was just happened. Wow. Water carved it out, but then as the water abandoned from this area, this rock went through sort of a similar process as you see happening with mud mm -hmm. and a mud puddle. It shrank, it constricted, it cracked, and then it started to cave in, as people like to say. <laughs> we don't like that term, it sounds negative. <laughs> so they refer to it as breakdown. Oh. Doesn't that sound nicer? And what's happening is the, is the cave is going through that breakdown phase, it's stabilizing. So air used to come in mm -hmm. before mining, and it would sink in the rotunda and hang there. Now that air gets drawn all the way back into here. And the, mm -hmm. the problem is it's created a false drip line where warm air and cold air meet, condenses, mm -hmm. and then it drips. The rotunda in 94, we had a horrible ice storm, mm -hmm. and temperatures were 
in the low teens to zero or below for several days. That area fell below freezing. And when it did, the moisture between the rocks froze and expanded, so it created wedging. And it dropped a 32 ton layer of rock. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. It's not a normal thing to have happen in the cave. You expect right. to see stuff like that occurring at, towards the entrance, closer yeah. to the entrance right. or outside. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The people who got caught in this cave have just seen all this washing water coming toward you. Oh, yeah. So we are in the second oldest level of cave and level five down below us is actually still forming where the river's at. There's evidence the system was discovered by indigenous people thousands of years ago and used for burial and food storage. Caves are amazingly good at keeping things that were once alive preserved. You know, they found a Native American in 1935 back behind me here, about a half mile behind me. They nicknamed him Lost John, he was well preserved. He had died 2,500 years later or earlier and still had his hair and his skin and his internal organs. The most recent evidence of human occupation is from the 1920s, based on these wall carvings from visitors before this place became a national park. Don't carve on the walls, friends. Well, there's someone wrote dick on the wall, so. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, some, some, some things never change. So. The eight to 10 million year old cave remained unknown to Westerners until 1797, when a hunter chased a wounded bear into the main entrance. So Mammoth Cave is a limestone cave. It was carved out by an underground river system. Um, and it's gigantic. It took about two hours to see all there was to see. After that, we popped out of the cave Chase taught us a barbershop tag. All my love. Yeah. And we talked about the highlights for the viewers at home. Olivia, what was your favorite moment in Mammoth Cave? Well, hello. I'm so happy to be part of this uh, millennial excursion to the national parks. So exciting. My favorite part of the cave was actually when you go into it, like right when you're about to go into the cave, you're like, you know, you're feeling this certain temperature and then you start to descend into the cave and you feel this massive, just cold suck of air. And it's like, where did that even come from? And apparently there's some, you know, science and physics behind what happens in the cave on how air goes in and out. But then when you come out of the cave, it's like a bunch of hot air. I don't even know. I, I, to me, it's magic, but I thought that was really, really cool. Love it. Thank you so much for your kind words. You're so welcome. So happy to be here. Uh, love it. Millennial uh, guide too. Yes. Boom. Two. <laughs> Chase. Yes. Welcome to the millennial guide too. Thank you so much for participating. It's my joy. Oh, I love it. It's my joy. So what was your hot take on the Mammoth Cave National Park? Three things. The beginning, the middle, and the beginning again. Because as soon as you walk in, it's that just beautiful waterfall and there's this greenery above it and it's just like the heavens shining down on you. But technically, once you're in the cave, I mean, there's so many awesome parts. I don't know that I could like boil it down to one, but the first huge cavern was pretty breathtaking. Guest number three, welcome to the Millennial Guide 2. Guest Alex, give it to us. What was your, what moment inspired you in the caves? First of all, thank you so much for having me, Vogue. I'm honored to be here. Um, second, like, my favorite was uh, the, like, the coffin. There was, like, a massive, like, piece of sheetrock that just was, like, big slab on big slab, and it's called the coffin. And it looks wild because it, it's probably the kind of coffin that I'll need because I'm just going to blow up more and more as I get older. Oh, I'd be love to hear it. Love to see it. Thank you. <laughs> Raul. <laughs> Mammoth Cave was really cool and we've since learned is extremely haunted. Um, so just know that if you go there, if you're like very open to like haunting energy. The sorting hat is ready. I'm hopeful.
Hufflepuffs are cute. Hufflepuffs are fierce. Hufflepuffs care about plants and deer. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> the next day we rode down to downtown Nashville. Said howdy to our friend John and we are liquidating assets for the hundredth time. We just watch too many videos about people living in their vans and we do not live in our car. We're like camping. So and we're I mean obviously we're also moving, but like we didn't need to bring a neutron ninja on the road. We can just do without smoothies for six weeks. We'll be fine. Yay! It's mostly bedding. It looks really good. Look at that. Look at that picture. It's yeah. like it's like everything's planned. We are getting rid of everything, and that is very true. Though it doesn't look like it. With that, we bid goodbye to our host Olivia. Love you, Olivia. And took off towards Alabama. See, See you there. there.